Okay, so uh, today we were going to work on some images stuff. Um, we talked about it on Twitter a little bit. You were working on images for your blog and or your new website, which looks amazing, by the way. Did you do those illustrations yourself? Um, so I did all the high fidelity mockups in Sketch, but the actual illustrations are from undraw.co. Um, it's oh, done nice. by a really awesome designer out in Greece, and I highly recommend you all go check her out. That's very cool. Yeah, it's a, a gorgeous site. Um, so yeah, you. if you want to take over, you can uh, kind of show us what you're working on. Um, maybe walk yeah. us through the code a little bit. Let's do it. Okay, let me share my screen. Mm -hmm. I'm used to go to meeting on Zoom. I'm going to throw that out there, so I'm a little slow. All right. Oh, I forgot. So, I'm, I'm throwing you right into the competition. Yeah. <laughs> It's all, it's all good. I use this for my German classes, so I should be better at it. But um, so yeah, this is what we're working with. So we're going to start on the work page here. And as you can see, we've got quite a few images. And um, if I just do a, a reload here, you can see there's a little bit of flashing on the load, which isn't fun. It's not pretty. So we're going to make it pretty. Um, so let's Excellent. go ahead and open some VS code. Oh, that's the other one. So here we go. I'm going to minimize that. So this is what we're starting with here. So we've got work.js, which is, it's all basically listed out here quite verbatim. We're not doing anything too crazy. Um, so we've just got these work item um, components that we are integrating. And those are quite simple. They just take an image, a title, um, and stuff like that. So I think the first thing we're going to want to do is talk a little bit about static queries. Yes. So um, the way that we're probably going to want to tackle this is we'll want to get the images into our, our GraphQL data layer. Um, by doing that, we get access to Sharp, um, which is a, a plugin that does image processing. Um, and then once we do that, we can use Gatsby Image. And using Gatsby Image, we get lazy loading and different processing. You know, you can do blur up or trace SVGs or um, something called uh, skip, which turns into polygons, lots of different ways that we can play with this. Um, so what I think would be probably a good way to start is by getting those images, the, the plan IT image or the planet image and the coding coach image into mm -hmm. our GraphQL layer. And the way we'll yeah. do that is with uh, Gatsby source file system, which do you already have, you already have that running, right? Uh, I don't think so. Maybe as like, it would just be a package that I had installed, right? Uh, it'll be in Gatsby config. Um, okay. Yeah. You've got Gatsby source file system in your, your package. And so in Gatsby config, let's see, oh, is it you're currently loading. Source? Yeah, there yep. we go. So you're, you're loading the pages directory. So what we can do is mm -hmm. copy paste that block. Okay. And the next one, we will, uh, we want to change that directory to be images. And then you'll want to change the name on line 20 as well. Mm -hmm. And so now if you stop and restart the server, we can jump into, um, we can jump into the graphical. So the, uh, the second URL that shows up once it rebuilds and yeah, that underscore, underscore, underscore graph QL. Yep. Um, I have that. And so here we can do a, a query for all file and let's, uh, let's add a filter to that. So after all file, we can, mm -hmm. um, we can add some parentheses and do, uh, let's try, let's see, let's pull the docs up so that I don't lead you the wrong way here. Mm -hmm. So up at the top right there, or actually oh, it's right in graphical. Cool. I haven't used this much, so. Yeah. So this I mm -hmm. love. If you, uh, if you click on the yellow query, it'll show you, yeah, that one also works. And so oh. you've got a list of all the available queries. And then if we look at the all file query here, then we can see what the filters are. And in our case, we're yep. going to filter. Do I type filter in here too? Yeah. Okay. Yep. And then, uh, you do a colon and an like open an object mm -hmm. and inside we can choose any of these things. So in our case, let's do source instance oh. name. 
Source instance name, okay. Yes, and this is the name that you set in the, um, the file system. So we are going to do another one. And so this is, is a little like, bit misleading. Do I need to define images or just? It, yeah, so but you, we, you do it inside of another object. Um, one okay. of the powers of this GraphQL layer is that you don't have to do direct, um, you don't have to do direct comparison. You can do like equals or is it, it's not equal to, it is equal to, uh, contains things like that. So you can do a, another colon and open a bracket. Mm -hmm. And in this case, uh, we want to do EQ for equals and then in uh, colon, and in double quotes, images. Cool. Yeah. And so now that those are in there, um, we're going to get a list of things back. So in GraphQL terminology, that's going to be edges and nodes. So we start with mm -hmm. edges. Then we get into the node. And then we can just grab, let's say, the relative path. Yeah. And run that query. And well, so this gives us all of our images. So mm -hmm. now what we'll be able to do is um, for each of these, we can make a query to sharp. And so I, do you have, uh, let's look at your Gatsby config again to see if you have it installed. Sure. Um, sure. Nope, I don't. Okay, so we are going to need to go to the Gatsby image docs. And so, let's see. Is there like an npm install or yarn? Yeah, it's all down here. So we need all of these. This whole thing, right? Mm-hmm. And the, the Those are the, well. But I need the first one as well, mm -hmm. I think. And so Gatsby image is a, a React component. It, um, it adds lazy loading, it adds, um, you know, it does the, the swap of like a source set image. So um, the way that the that lazy loading works is that you take like a really tiny version of an image that you can, that you can inline. So like uh, instead of including a, a file that you have to make another HTTP request for, you are able to do a um, just an inline data query or a data string, and that removes the request, gets it on the page immediately. But you can't do that for full size images because it would make the the HTML enormous. So what Gatsby Image does is it takes a really tiny version of the image and inlines it, which becomes like a blurry version of the image because browsers will blur tiny images to make them like less janky. Um, and then behind the scenes, it does a source set call. Source set is a browser standard that says, you know, if you're over this resolution, load this version of the image, or if you're over this resolution, load this version of the image. And that way we only load big images when we're on big screens, which is a super powerful way to like limit bandwidth, um, which, you know, when you're going for performance, you want to make sure that you get away from uh, sending somebody like a 2,400 mm -hmm. pixel wide image that's going to be shown on a, a you know, a, a one pixel per inch like 300 pixel wide screen. Um, so the source set lets us do this. And I, I, I realize I'm probably explaining to a bunch of things to you that you already know. So I, <laughs> no, it's um, really good to hear this, the repetition, it's good. But so what, what Gatsby Image is doing then is it's basically giving you all of that for free. You feed it um, this GraphQL query that we're gonna write in a minute, and that gives it the source set images, the small image, things like that. And then we add the JavaScript that will say, show the, the tiny blurry image until the bigger image is loaded and then fade in the bigger image so that you get this really nice experience um, instead of the, the pop like we were seeing on your portfolio now. Yeah. And so that's, uh, uh, that's kind of what we, what we want to go for. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, can you just quickly, so I've noticed just through reading these docs that we've got a couple of different options with this. So I've noticed we've got fixed and we've got, what was it? Um, flex, it wasn't fluid. flexible, it was fluid. Yeah. So can you explain what the difference between those is? Yes. Uh, so a fixed width image is like, okay, in my layout, this is always going to be 400 pixels wide. 
And, Mm -hmm. you know, if we, if we expand the page out, it will like flow next to something as opposed to expanding fluid is like, I will always be a hundred percent of the, the current container width. Um, and the way that those queries differ is that for, I believe for a fluid image, we have a bigger source set. Um, and then for a fixed width image, we kind of do just resolution based stuff. We know that it should be roughly 400 pixels or 800 if it's a, a two uh, double double density screen or, or something like that. Um, and it's also in the way that it gets marked up where like fluid is intended to expand and shrink, whereas fix is intended to be exactly the width that you set it at. Uh, mm-hmm. Both of them support things like cropping or changing the focus, or you can make them into duo tone or add traced SVGs. There are a, a, just a ton of different features that you can add. Um, those are worth playing with. Um, there's a demo, I think, up at the top that shows a little bit of this stuff. Uh, if you scroll back up to the top of the, the Gatsby image stuff, I think there's a demo link pretty, yeah. Oh, starters that use this? It's actually oh, demo. under the, it yes. It says demo. <laughs> <laughs> All good. It's not ten at night here. <laughs> I know. Thanks for staying up so late. I uh, I feel like it's you all good. definitely got the nap. short end of the stick We're on this. <laughs> okay. Um, um, also, question: This high severity vulnerability. Should I audit that? Audit fix. That is a great question. That seems and new. And also, so... I installed Gatsby Image before, and a it never took this long. So I'm curious if it's the live streaming, um, and I've never gotten this issue before. So. So it's like the live streaming definitely makes everything slow um, because it eats a lot of bandwidth. But uh, I, I'm not sure where that high severity vulnerability comes from. And I think we should look at that real fast. Um, Oh, missing origin validation. (laughs) Interesting. Oh, that's hmm. Okay. I'm taking a note that we need to look into that, but that's probably not something that we're going to be able to do on this stream. Uh, Should I just go ahead and install the secondary packages or do you want to do something? Yes, please. Okay. Uh, I don't think there's anything that we can do with it right now. The Webpack dev server is, yeah, I'm not sure what's going on there. Um, I'll take a screenshot for you too, in case you want that. Yes, please. Okay, so that's gonna take a a second. Um, Now this is probably a dumb question and forgive me for that, but uh, maybe other people have the same question. Can you explain what image sharp is? What is sharp? Is that just a name that they came up with? Sharp is a, it's a library. So we, we use sharp under the hood. It's like a compiled binary to do all the image processing. It, um, it will take an image, re-encode it at different resolutions using different little, it'll sample colors. It can do like identify the focus of an image and you know, it'll find your face and like crop to your face as opposed to just cropping to Mm -hmm. an arbitrary point. Um, it's really, really powerful, but it's, uh, it's not built in like native, node. So it's kind of like SAS. Like, you know, when you install SAS, how you have to also install the SAS binary. Yeah. And then sometimes that turns into like this version of SAS is not compatible with your version of node. So you have to like mm-hmm. delete node modules and reinstall sharp sometimes gets you into the same point <laughs> where like it, you'll be using node eight and then you'll switch to another project and you're on node 10 and then sharp will explode. And so you have to like delete node modules and reinstall. Um, but it's, it's super powerful which is why we put mm-hmm. up with the, you know, there is there is no equivalent of that. That's like a native code NPM module that I know of. Um, but, you know, that's kind of the, the magic of, of what's going on there. Um, so let's see, did we get everything installed? I believe so. I think we're good. Let me see. Yeah, it looks like we're, we should be good. Okay. And... That, all right, so that sounds good. So what we can do next then is let's stop and st- or let's restart the dev server and go back to graphical, and we mm-hmm. can start looking at what um, Sharp gives us. Um, here's just a quick Gatsby question in general. Um, at what point would you move away from inline styles to an actual style sheet? 
Uh, I think that that's a very subjective question. Um, I, I tend to do it pretty quickly. Um, yeah. But that's mostly because I don't like refactoring code. Yeah. Um, so it's like a, it's not so much because I think it's right or wrong, but more just that I'm impatient and like, if yeah. I know I'm going to do it eventually, I'll just do it now. Um, okay. So now that we've got this, you should be able to do, mm -hmm. uh, right next to relative path, we should be able to grab child image sharp. Mm -hmm. Uh, like could... this. Yeah, but it's not Oops. showing up. So... It would help if I could spell, <laughs> but it doesn't oh, show and up. We haven't installed it yet. That's my fault. Um, so we have to <laughs> back in the Gatsby image docs. Um, we yeah, have okay, to add those, going. the plugins that it specifies. Oh, gotcha. And just grab those two. Is that just all the way back up? Yeah, we're good. Yep. Oh, I don't have prettier on here. All right. Uh oh. Uh, okay. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is perfect. So now if we we'll have to stop and start it again, so those yeah. plugins get picked up, and then now we should have uh, child child image sharp, and hopefully those warnings that were coming up aren't. Uh oh. Oh shit. Okay, so this is what I was a little worried about. Cannot read property filter of unde undefined. So let's go up to the first error. Mm -hmm. Get nodes by type is not a function. Gatsby transformer sharp. Hmm. Um, let's see. Uh, okay, so I'm we curious. Should... Hold on. So maybe let me explain. I did try to use this prior to okay. releasing it, and I couldn't get it to work. The way I wanted, so I've removed it. But maybe there's some residual something going on back there. Could this be causing problems? It might be. So let's do this. Let's uh, let's make sure that it's not something in like the lock file or or leftover node modules. Um, mm -hmm. So let's remove. Uh, so let's do a rimraf for node modules. Um, sorry, the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, I, I'm like using words that only what make sense. What is rimraf? What is that? So, it, uh, the terminal command is rm rf, and so if you just oh. read it phonetically, it's rimraf. I've never heard anyone say that out loud. <laughs> um, sorry, I like, I, I work alone, and so a lot of these things are just things that I talk to myself about. <laughs> Where's Marissa when you need her? <laughs> I know, I know. I'm going um, to just delete it. <laughs> but so, yeah, so we want to delete that. And then we want to delete the dot cache folder. Yeah, is that back up at the top? Yeah, this one. And let's also delete the package lock. Okay. And once we've got those gone, let's do a, a yarn install or an NPM install. Sorry. Yeah, that was probably my fault. Don't worry. It's probably nothing on your end. I think I probably screwed it up. <laughs> Fine. It might be a, like, if we hit it again, um, we could, we can definitely look at um, whether or not, like, there's a, an outdated module or, or something along those lines. Mm-hmm. What okay. we could do, so I have that example of this static query. We could talk about this a little bit. So how do we actually use that graphic, mm. graphical query and bring it in? Yes. So here, this is another project. Yes. Yep. Um, so you're doing a couple things that I love. This is uh, the, the GraphQL queries, like GraphQL in general is like one of my favorite things. Um, and one of the things that's nice about it is that you get this concept of fragments where you're able to take um, a selection of subfields 
and group them up under a variable name, basically. So it's, it's variables for GraphQL is what a fragment is. And you kind of spread them the same as you would in JavaScript using the, the ellipsis up front. So what, what this query is doing is it's saying, okay, so for the file that is named eugene.png, go into the child image sharp and get the fixed width of at you know 260 by 320, and then use all the fields that are contained in the Gatsby image sharp fixed fragment. Um, but what you're doing that's very cool is you are giving it a, a prefix of Eugene on line 85 mm -hmm. there, which means that you can now call that file, yep. you can call that query multiple times in the same yeah. query. And then when you what you get out the other side is named Eugene. So yeah, like on what you that line you've got highlighted there, it's amazing. It's like such a useful way to, yeah. to do this. Um, and so what's really cool is that once we get this running on line four, you're importing Gatsby image. And mm -hmm. then on line 13, all we have to do is take the output of that fixed query and drop it into the image component and everything else just happens, um, which is which is really nice. So hopefully once we, if we get through this, uh, this NPM install, we'll be able to do oh, there we that go. same Look thing. That. Everything installed? Haha. -ha. Yeah. Okay. All right. Fingers crossed. Everything's going to work. It's not you. It's me, Jason. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's the curse of live coding. Like every time that you decide you're going to do something live, it's like, oh, that edge case that always goes wrong. <laughs> I'm gracefully degrading at this point. It's fine. All right. <laughs> And we're back. Okay. Back in business. So we can go back to graphical and now let's try to get child image sharp. You'll have to refresh the page to get that. Aha. And um, so if we, uh, if you want to actually, I think you can hold command and click on that and it'll open the docs for it. Oh. Neat. Yeah. And so over here, let me move this video thing so that we can see. Um, so this, this will show us this everything that comes out. Does this point mean that it's required? It does. And, okay. but what it what that means is uh, is more that like it can't be undefined. So not required okay. like you have to add it, but but required in the sense that the schema can't break, uh, or the the schema you can rely on that field always being set. Like it'll never come mm -hmm. back null. Um, and so then in here, what we can do is we can make a query to, uh, in this case, I think you'd probably want to do fluid, right? Because I imagine when you go responsive that those images kind of stay right. at hundred mm -hmm. percent. And then uh, you can see on the right hand side where fluid is defined, all the options that you have. So yeah. you can, if you want, set a max width, you can set the like duotone if you want, or to crop it or rotate it or all sorts of things. Um, in, in most cases, you probably just want to set a max width. So yeah. whatever your max width is for uh, your portfolio, we can set that. Okay. I think it defaults. I have no idea, I to be honest. You can just pick a random arbitrary. And that, so that would be passed in as a... a what, like an like argument? A, yeah, parenthetical. I need to up my like keyboard game. There we go. <laughs> I know I every time that I like live streaming with all these keyboard shortcuts and I'm like, I don't. I Sometimes I watch people like Ryan Florence do like Vim coding and I it, like, I just get that blank look on my face. Like, are you a wizard? Like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, <I understand. laughs> don't get it. Um, but yeah, so pick any, any number, probably like 1600 is a good safe, uh, not too big, but not too small. And then inside mm -hmm. of that, what you would typically do is the fragment, but to, to kind of see how this works, let's set, let's grab source set and you can just run that query. And so what it's doing right now is it just did a, uh oh, did it? Oh, the SVGs it skips because SVGs don't get, gotcha. aren't processed by sharp. And then for the PNG, mm -hmm. we get, um, a set of, of multiple images. So this is what Sharp does for us. It went through and it grabbed all these images, created the different um, resolutions, 
and then feeds those back to us so that we can use them however we see fit. Uh, really, really powerful. So now uh, we can take this and we can start looking at static query. Mm, yeah. Like, let's go do some code. Let's, yeah, let's go do some code. Um, My brain. And I'm sorry. I'm not normally <laughs> this like socially inept. It's fine. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. So yeah. probably what we'll want to do is follow the same pattern that you did for the other site with the, the individual file queries, because otherwise mm -hmm. we'll have to write logic to, to kind of sort them out. Um, yep. It's up to you if you want to do a different way or if you want to kind of go with the way that you've been doing it. Do you have a preference? We can do whatever. I mean, honestly, I wasn't married to this idea. This was kind of something I just did and didn't think too much about it. So, um, For the sake of not severely overcomplicating this, I would say let's... Uh, let's probably just do like individual file queries. And then depending on how quickly that goes, we could look at a way to turn it into a loop so that you've got drier mm -hmm. code, but ultimately that's going to end up kind of, instead of being this list of work items, it'll be an object that would then get mapped into a work item. So I don't know that it's going to gain you that much in terms of, of uh, cleaning yeah. things up. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. Um, is this a const? Uh, so like in the this, yeah, so in this case, it's actually going to be a little bit different. So we're going to okay. import static query from Gatsby as a named import. Um, yeah. And So are we talking uh, like? Yes, but it's going to be inside of curly braces. Yeah. And um, I don't know if your linter calls this out, but. Typically, you, you would group the absolute imports above the relative imports. Maybe that's mm. just my own, maybe that's just my own like tick. I don't know if that really matters. Anyways, I, I have know. A, my, my work environment on, I need to redo the whole thing. I don't think it's fully working. ESLint is just taking a break. Yeah. All I, right. And I, it's, it's clearly not, well, wait, what something broke. What, what broke on us? Um, oh, we've got, uh, We've got code oh yeah, that's because I threw a query down here, and it's like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> so um, this, and we can delete the, we can delete line eighty-eight. Okay. So with static query, what ends up happening is static query is like a render props pattern, so it's going to wrap your whole layout. Oh. Um, and so we can either put it inside or outside layout. It doesn't really make a huge amount of difference. It's mostly up to you. Um, so we can just add the static query uh, mm -hmm. wherever you want. It's a React component. Okay. And it takes two props. The first one is query, and the second one is render. Or I hope that's right. I remember Am doing I... this, and I can't remember. Oh, I think I – hold on. I think I've done this because I had a, a routing. Do you remember I messaged you about a routing – thing where I wanted the home page to be yellow and all the other pages to be white. And I Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I oh wasn't here. I did this somewhere, I remember. So we can just talk through it. But yeah, so um you'll have that and then you'll have a render prop which is the same thing. Um and that render prop and then you it's a self closing element. So that'll be yeah. kind of the that's the general structure of it. And so the query is going to use that query that we have. Um, yep. Uh, hold on. I think we just, we lost a couple things just now. Where did, yeah. okay. So you move that down below. So the render is going to be what returns all of the markup inside of it. And that's going to receive mm -hmm. um, data. And then it's kind of, it's like a callback function. So like this. Yeah, and in this case, because we're probably not going to do a lot of logic, you can just do the the parenthetical like implicit return for all the mm -hmm. like just re yes. like throw all this JSX yes. stuff in here. Exactly. I really hope. 
Oh, there we go. Pretty ears back in yeah. action. All right, good deal. Um, and so then, inside grab, of query, do I need to grab the query? Yeah. And that's going to go that inside was... of a. Ooh, something went weird. Yeah, um, hold on. I, I undid that. <laughs> okay, so do a, a template literal. Mm-hmm. And then p- paste it inside of there. Okay. And then we need a, a template tag, which is the, the GraphQL um, template literal that we can import from Gatsby. So or like this? Tag. Or sorry, it just it's just GraphQL. It what do you mean? Oh like this? But, yeah. And okay. then you stick that in front of the uh, template literal on line seventeen. So you're just tagging. Oh, sorry. Yep, exactly. And so what this will do then is at runtime, we go through and we find all of these queries and then we um, we kind of grab the data and then we inject it into the render prop as the, the data prop. So that's the kind of what's happening under the hood. Um, mm-hmm. And that's why static query works. And it's also why static query doesn't allow any variables because we're extracting it at build time, not at runtime, which means that we're not parsing all the JavaScript around it. Um, so with that being said, uh, probably the easiest thing to do would be to um, take a just console log what comes out of data so that we can see what the, the result is. Mm-hmm. We're uh, just in here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, anywhere you want. Where's the best place to do this? Uh, can I just I do mean, th- you could. Well, you can't do it. Oh, yeah. shit. Okay, so this is going to complain because we need to wrap it in like a fragment or something. Yeah. Um, I mean, I could just add like, a, a node in here, to be honest. Like, I could just throw like an H1 in, or like yeah. a paragraph in. Well, it, no, I mean like we have to wrap everything because you, you either have to return an array, at which point we'd have to, to key everything, or you have to have like a single top level element. A single parent. So yeah. we okay. probably just want to move the layout inside so that you don't have empty divs or yeah, whatever. Yeah, that's fine. We can do that. And that should get us back to a. Um, it would go one more up. Is it? Okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So that should work. And then uh, up above, we can we can drop that console log like next to development work on on forty three. On forty three. Do I need I need these? In, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I can just do it like this, right? Um, I don't know what that's going to render to, so I would just console log it. And then assuming we didn't have any issues with the the markup, which I don't know, you'll you'll be a better coder than I am if it works. (laughs) Every time I add one of these, I get something wrong. Oh, that's just okay. So you you got through there. Let's see if the let's see if it renders on the front end. Oh my god. Okay. You're just a better developer than me. Um, it's fine. <laughs> and we should have, yeah, there's our object and our all file. Yes. Great. Sweet. So now we can just replace that with the kind of, um, you know, the way that you have like Eugene and then the file query to get your individual mm-hmm. images. We can do the same thing for maybe just one of them to start. And then, yeah. uh, so the, we can start with the go to meeting one and yeah. Um, and so because we're importing the images directory directly, then the, the query should be like uh, above all files. So like on, yeah, we can just do like go to meeting and then the actual query itself would be um, like colon and then file. And probably to save us some heartache let's do this in graphical because <laughs> otherwise yeah, we're probably going to get this wrong a few times <laughs> um and we want to do a uh, parent parentheses and i think we want it to be relative path mm-hmm. um 
And then inside of that, we're going to do curly braces equals and, and yeah, and then I, whatever you call the image. Um, good question. Uh, just go to meeting. Go to meeting. Yeah. yeah. Do I need the extension? Yes. Because in this case, we're looking for an e like a string equality. And then uh -huh. inside, you can grab all of the fields that are inside node and just apply those directly. Where do you, yeah, there. Yep, and then if you hit that prettify, it'll fix it. Okay. Okay, give that a shot. Well, and look we at get that. go to meeting. Okay, so we can grab that out. You can drop the relative path out because we don't need it. Um, okay. I, that was just kind of to show, or sorry, not that one, but the one on line three. Because we, we won't oh, actually gotcha. use that anywhere. Uh, but this one, we can drop in. And let's, and you, you can honestly replace the whole all file because we're not going to use that either. Mm -hmm. And now um, what we can do is we're already importing Gatsby image, but we probably mm -hmm. want to import Gatsby image inside of work item actually. Yeah. And we can just pass um, the data dot go to meeting into yeah. uh, Okay. Yes. And so, that? so all that will really change here is um, instead of passing in the imported go to meeting image, you're going to do data dot go to meeting. And, was it? Uh, and well, you can do this a couple ways. So you can pass it in as like the, the object and then inside you can do the, the drilling to like child image sharp dot fluid oh. um, or you can do uh, yeah, really it's it's up to you um, we just have to make sure that we get it that it's consistent between what goes into work item and what gets used in work mm -hmm. item I think um, well I think this is probably good right I mean I don't want to drill in I mean I think that we should do the work in the the component yeah. where it's going to be rendered yeah, I mean, in, in this particular case, because it's like prop drilling, it's kind of potato potato. Um, yeah. In a in a perfect world, what would happen is we'd be able to support variables in these queries, and you would mm -hmm. do all of the work inside a work item. But unfortunately, we can't do that, so it's easier to to kind of co-locate them here. Um, so then, inside of work item, we need to drill down a little bit and get the um, the image dot. I think it's going to be child image sharp. Um, and so you can keep the alt. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can actually just swap out like image for image. Yeah. And then uh, source will fluid, change. Right? Yeah, fluid. And then image dot child image sharp dot fluid. And we're going to have to swap out for a uh, fragment because we currently aren't sending it all the things it's looking for. Um, but that's okay. Oh, so like have, have the Because Because remember on your, uh, well, on your other, uh, on the actual GraphQL query, in your other project, mm -hmm. you're using the like Gatsby image fluid or Gatsby sharp. I can't remember exactly what it is, but on the, um, the Gatsby image docs, it'll show, I think, the fluid fragment. Yeah, that's. Yeah. So actually, let's just grab that and then just change the word fixed to fluid. Um, just okay. the line 102. You don't need the rest of it. Oh, okay. Yeah. So where does that one go? That one goes... Oh, sorry. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Sorry. I was. There's a question in the chat that I was trying to read through because oh. it's a little um so yeah we can delete source set and then oh, okay. make sure that there are three uh three dots oh, on line 20 yeah. and that should do it 
So let's give that a shot. The only thing I think that's going to break, though, is the fact that the other ones don't have this. Like, we're not... Oh, yeah. So maybe we should comment out the other ones for now to make sure that nothing explodes. (laughs) Yeah, that sounds good. Um... Uh, yeah, yes, Lynn, you're fine. Okay, does not like that. What? Image is undefined. Image is undefined. So let's take a look. Are we still console logging what came out? No, let me add that back in. Mm. Where'd you you, go? I mean, you can kind of drop it wherever you want. Can I clear you? Oh, Lord. Okay. So this is. Okay, so it is coming in, but something is. So all the stuff that we need is there, which is good. We've got mm-hmm. the that base 64 image is like the tiny one that we talked about that gets uh, inlined instead of being an HTTP request. And mm-hmm. then um, sizes is something. It's kind of a hint for the browser on like where to um, where to set the breakpoints for source set. Uh, source is a fallback, source set is the array of images, and that gives us everything we need. Um, and let's see. Images data that go to me, which should be fine. Okay, so let's see what's going wrong here. Um, Image is undefined. Okay. Yeah, okay, so that's weird. So when it actually gets passed in to work item, it's undefined. Okay. So we're missing something. So let's go back to work. Mm-hmm. And we've got data. And we're doing data.goto meeting. So let's look at that console log with of, of everything again. Mm-hmm. And maybe what we should... Yeah, let's just look at it real quick. So what comes out is... Oh, uh, it's a casing issue. We um, gotcha. So this needs to be like this. What? Yeah, whatever we set in the the query, it has to be. It's case sensitive. Okay, that's good. ah. Okay, so now if we hide the console, you should have a, a really nice looking load for that image. How pretty. <laughs> Beautiful. Um, so yeah, wonderful. Then uh, what we can do next is just duplicate that for the other mm-hmm. images and drop those in. Yeah. What is it? Four or more? Mm-hmm. We've got... So where did that title case come from? That came from... That's uh, what we said on like line 17. That's, it, it's arbitrary, oh, whatever you set, oh, but we have, to, we have to use the same thing. Gotcha. All right. Yeah, let me and just change that. Coding coach? Oh, yeah. What happened to that one? Where did you go? How did I miss that? That's strange. Oh, look at that. I just skipped one. It's fine. (laughs) Um. Okay, 
So that should work. And then we can just uncomment this stuff now. And then swap them out to just prefix all of them with like data dot. Um, mm -hmm. So they, oh, and then I guess drop the, the image at the end too. Oh, yeah. Okay. Look at that. Beautiful. How and nice. So we use intersection observer here to make sure that um, we don't start loading the larger, the higher resolution stuff um, mm -hmm. until we, uh, we, we don't do the, the higher resolution stuff until it's actually going to enter the viewport so that we don't waste anybody's data. I love that. Yeah. Awesome. So yeah, we got uh, we got some good I stuff. I have a working and then, portfolio. <laughs> you do. Um, and one thing that just came through in the comments that was a good uh, a good call out from Jump a Lot of High uh, on work in the query um, GraphQL queries don't need commas, so they'll work, but they're not required. So you can drop. Oh yeah, all what those. the heck. You're talking to a GraphQL noob over here, so it's fine. Cool. Yeah. So, hey, we did it. We did it. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm totally you... exhausted right now. Can you tell? Yeah. So um, if you want, we can call it here because we accomplished what we came to accomplish. Um, or, you know, we can uh, really, I guess it's up to you. Like, do you did you have another thing that you wanted to dig into or? You feel like, feel like yourself. No, but I would like to think like, how would we refactor this, right? Because what if I have a hundred images? That's not practical to keep listing them all out necessarily. Is there a better way to do that? Um, so there are a couple ways that you could do it. I mean, the the biggest thing is because each of these has a lot of data that goes into it. So if we look at one of those work items, you've got like six or seven um, props that gets fed mm -hmm. in. So just makes that effectively, an, an array of objects. Yeah, so you'd end up with an array of objects. And you could, in theory, like loop through. So you, that, yeah. Yeah. So you could do something like put the images for your portfolio in a subfolder of images and then mm -hmm. load all the images matching the file glob, like portfolio star, like PNG or JPEG. Um, mm -hmm. And then loop through those and like match them to the the array of objects but mm -hmm. that's kind of like in this particular case because work item is already pretty clean i don't think you need it like it's okay. it uh, you know that's kind of a case of like you'd be optimizing but i don't actually know that it would really affect the cleanliness of this code at all um yeah. it's just kind of yeah it's, it's kind of like where do you clean. draw the line between like refactoring it to be very I don't know the right word, but, but being explicit is almost better in this instance because it's such a small use case. Yeah. And also uh, like if abs, like the abstraction wouldn't provide any measurable uh, right. cleanliness, like you're not really duplicating a lot of code. The, the work is already pretty dried out by being encapsulated inside work item. So all you'd really mm -hmm. be doing by abstracting it out is creating an, like an array of objects that then are just as easy to read as work item is to read. And so the, the right. extra level of work, I, I just don't know that it adds any benefit in this particular instance. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Um, but yeah, so this is great. I mean, your portfolio is beautiful too. Like you, I, I, I would love to see, um, can you go back and just show off just kind of the, some of the other pages? Cause it looks so nice. Yeah, so what I can do to you, like, is how do I actually design some of this stuff? So, yes, please. Oh man, I don't, I don't have it. Um, okay, well, let me just show you with this. So, this is the other code example that we were using. This is for the, um, the JavaScript meetup that I, I help organize. Um, yeah. When I design, um, a big part of it comes down to inspiration. I think that's where most of us struggle is. What do I want this to look like? I am not a trained designer. Um, and so 
this is one of my favorite sites to go to. So if anyone's looking for design inspiration. So like, for example, when I'm like, all right, I need a landing page. I went and I found this on Dribbble, right? And I'm like, okay, I love the colors. Um, like the layout, it's very simple. And then from there, I kind of just play around with things until it looks pretty decent. Um, yeah. I wish I had my, my blogs one. I'm not sure where that one went. But um, yeah, so I like to keep things simple. And the all the illustrations ugh, come from here. This is possibly the greatest, um, one of the greatest websites I've ever come across. You can literally put in any hex code you want, change all of these. And what I would normally do is just download the ones that I want, throw them into sketch, and then just like alter certain um, path, paths and colors of the different SVG um, to fit my needs. Um, so highly recommend her for graphics. And then, um, yeah, I just, I wanted something simple and maintainable because when I, when I design my portfolio, the thing is I've done this like seven times, right? And I always get indecisive and I always never get to the coding part because I'm so like back mm. and forth with the design. So I was like, all right, let's just do something simple. That is, um, it won't, it'll stand the test of time, I guess is, is what I, I want that to say. So, oh, the, yeah, so this is the other one. This is the one we were chatting about earlier. Um, this is maybe another example where I'm using absolute pads right now. Um, mm. I'm actually, you know, using the href to like my medium the, where it's being hosted on Medium, but maybe what I should be doing is pulling these images into an image folder using Gatsby image so it's performant and um, looks a little bit nicer and you don't have that flashing. So I think that'll be my next step. Yeah, I uh, let me see. I think we might even have like a, it's probably not in the scope of today, but I think we have a Gatsby source right. medium where oh, theoretically, cool. yeah, let me... Let me grab this because I think you would be able to, using Gatsby source medium, um, you might be able to just like import stuff. And then- That'd be would, really cool. Yeah, you could build your blog off of medium and then you'd kind of be able to like publish both places. Um, or yeah. like pull your old medium stuff and then new stuff would be published on your blog kind of directly. Um, the other thing that I wanted to do with this Gatsby site in particular was use the APIs for meetup.com and integrate mm -hmm. them. Um, yeah. I don't know. You guys don't have any integrations for that out of the box, right? I don't know. Let's find out. Gatsby source meetup. Sure do. What? Well, okay. <laughs> I know my next project. <laughs> Yeah, it looks like it. You can you can set uh, you need your Meetup API key, your group URL name, and then there are a couple other options for like what you want to get, whether it's just upcoming stuff or also the past stuff. Um, oh yeah, this is super cool. Let me share this in the chat. Yeah, because well. I'd love to use so that um, that Egghead course that talked about how to build a blog with the markdown and the GraphQL queries. I would love to do that for past meetups where I just you know iterate through that those old archived events and just essentially list them how I have my blog set up here. Maybe have a little, like I've designed over here, maybe have a little sidebar with the different months um, you can click on and filter that way. So I think oh, that's yeah. going to be my next step with Gatsby. And uh, I, I might be coming back for some help if I get stuck. Yeah, please do. I And I would love to see this built because, um, you know, we we get questions about stuff like this a lot. So if uh, if we get your site built as kind of the canonical example, then it's a thing we can point to. Absolutely. That sounds great. Awesome. All right, Emma. Um, do you have anything else that you wanted to, to go over or, or talk about before we wrap? I don't think so. I think this was so much fun. I really appreciated your time and I hope that someone found this useful. I found it very useful. I, I had a lot of fun doing it. I love seeing your design process. Um, I was super happy to see that everything worked after our initial sharp yeah. issue scared me a little okay, bit. I'm sorry, so. I <laughs> I owned no. up to it and I wasn't like, all right, I don't know who did this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Somebody else must have been on my computer. <laughs> all right. Well, I'll let you go. Uh, thanks for staying up late to to stream with us. This was uh, this was super yeah, fun. No Thank you all right. so much. Take care. Bye. Talk to you later. Bye.